Hello everybody, today we're returning to the Warhammer 40,000 universe and we're going to paint some Night Lords Chaos Space Marines. Unfortunately, if you've picked them as your legion of choice for your Chaos Space Marines army, you're out of luck. There is no quick way of painting Night Lords without them looking like a bag of crap. As such, this tutorial means you're going to learn how to paint them in about 45 minutes as opposed to about half that time for some of the other legions. And that's just because... You're painting them blue, you have to paint loads of gold trim, and then you have to do some funky stuff on top of that. So without further ado, let's get started. First things first, you need to undercoat your model, and today we're going to use Mechanica's Standard Grey as our base. Next up, you're going to need Leviathan Blue Contrast, and this is a dark blue. You'll notice we've not undercoated the model with a contrast undercoat or white. We're actually, we've started with quite a dark base as far as they go, but it doesn't matter because we're going to be painting a dark blue anyway. Now, when you paint Leviathan blue over the top of Mechanica Standard Grey, the effect you get is almost identical to Night Lord's blue, which is why we're doing it. But Leviathan blue comes out of the pot and goes onto the model much, much quicker than trying to layer paint uh, Night Lord's blue all over it. So that's why we're using a contrast. Obviously, if you do own Night Lord's blue and you want to use that, you can use that. Uh, it's just going to add a little bit more time to painting the model because you're going to have to shade it afterwards. Next up, you're going to need lead belcher, and we're going to paint in some of the metallic details. In this case, the chainsword, uh, a couple of other details on the uh, armor, and then the bolt pistol and the blade sticking out the top of his head. How weird. Next up, you're going to need Retributor Armor and Lead Belcher together. We're going to mix them and create an ancient looking gold, which comes out like this. It's not quite as red as Retributor Armor straight out of the pot. It's not quite as silver as Lead Belcher. Uh, the ratio you need them is one blob of Lead Belcher to two blobs of uh, Retributor Armor, and that's going to give you an ancient gold. Now you don't need to worry about being too precise with how you measure them up. You can't really go wrong mixing those colours, so uh, don't be afraid to just scoop it out of the pot. And as long as you've got roughly twice as much gold as you do silver, you are going to be absolutely fine. So once it's all mixed, start putting it on all of the armour trim going round the model. Now this is probably the most time-consuming part of painting Chaos Space Marines, is painting in all of this trim. Unless your model or the scheme you've chosen for your Legion is all one colour, including the trim, Space Marines take quite a long time to paint. So work your way around, do it as quick as you can, but be as neat as you possibly can, and uh, you should get a nice effect. And here is that nice effect. As you can see, it's not quite as red as Retributor Armor. It's a, it's a good ancient gold that blends well with the blue. Once you've painted all that, you can move on to Rhinox Hide. We're going to paint in all of the leather areas, which is his belt. Don't forget the bit going through the loop at the front. And then any other hanging leather straps you can see. Equip yourself with some Abaddon Black and you're going to paint in some of the uh, armour trim between each of the big armour panels. You're going to paint in some of the piping on his backpack and you're going to paint in the vents and any other bits that you can see that look like they should be black. With all of those stages done, your model should look something like this. So you can compare yours to the video and make sure that you are on the right track. Once you've done that, we're going to switch to corn red and we're going to paint in some of the red details. Uh, in this case, it's going to be the tabard cloth thing hanging from his waist and uh, his eyes. Be aware that this may take you a couple of coats. Don't be afraid to, if you're batch painting these in particular, paint one layer on every single model. And then by the time you get back around to the first, it'll be dry. And then just paint another quick layer on all of them to get the, the best and smoothest effect. Next, we can use Agrax Earthshade to shade in all of the reds, all of the browns, uh, and most importantly, the gold. Uh, don't worry too much about the metallics for now. We're going to use Nuln Oil for that shortly. It's worth noting that a lot of Chaos Space Marine models have horns and other bone protrusions sticking out of the armour. If you do have a model that's got that sticking out of it, 
then paint those Rakarth flesh or Zandri dust, one of the two. Probably recommend Rakarth flesh, make it a bit paler. Uh, once you've painted it, when you reach this step, put Agrax Earthshade all over it and then just paint it up um, Rakarth flesh again and that will be the horns pretty much done. Switch to your second shade of Known Oil and that is going to go over all of the metallic areas. Now equip yourself with Hoeth Blue because what we're going to do is a little bit of highlighting. Now this is kind of optional, however it's the aim of the channel that although we're speed painting stuff we also want it to kind of look like we haven't just speed painted it. So for this we're going to add in a little bit of highlights and we're going to pick out the most sharp raised areas on the model. So on the backpack uh, and around the feet uh, and around the shoulder pads because it will be really obvious that they are an edge and it will just really catch the eye if you highlight it just a little bit. So around the vents there and uh, any areas you can find that you think light would be reflecting off of and just give them a really quick once over with Hoeth Blue. Next, equip yourself with Evil Sun Scarlet. We're going to use that as a highlight on the corn red that we painted earlier. So just go around all of the most raised areas on the cloth and on his eyes and just make that stand out a little bit more. With the red all done, it's time to move on to Fenrisian Grey. And we're going to paint in the iconic Night Lord's lightning streaks on the armour. So, as I said, starting with Fenrisian Grey, we're just going to paint some zigzag style, natural looking lightning bolts. Uh, and to do that, I'm just going to paint some little lines and make them change direction every now and then, looking like bolts of lightning going down the armour. If you're unsure what to do here, you can either copy what I'm doing on there, or alternatively, literally just Google a picture of lightning bolts. And just pick one of your favourites and then just try and copy a pattern onto the armour. It's really quite easy to do uh, and the effect looks really good. But you want to make sure you use a detail brush and keep the lines fairly thin. Next up, get your white scar and we're going to use that to fill in the inside of the lightning bolts. So you just want to put a tiny little bit running down the centre of each of the lines that you've already done. You don't want to use a line that's thicker than the Fenrisian grey line. You want it just to run down the inside. It can be quite fiddly. If you're not confident doing this, just leave your Fenrisian grey ones. They'll look absolutely fine. And from a distance, people really won't notice if you haven't done this step. It's really important to remember that less is more when it comes to these lightning bolts. The temptation is to draw them all over your model. Don't do that because it will look like your model is a Pokemon or a 1970s Elton John impersonator. So it really is better just to pick one side of the model, do a few lightning bolts, have a look, think, oh, I could do a couple more and then do a couple more. Don't plaster it all over it. You've been warned. With the lining bolts done, the model's now pretty much finished. I've got my transfer sheet now, and I'm going to chop one out, which I've done with a knife, being careful not to chop my fingers off. I've got the bit of the shoulder pad that I'm going to put it on a little bit wet, and now I'm holding it in the water for 30 seconds. You don't need any more than that, because the transfer will actually fall off the paper and sink to the bottom of your cup, never to be found again. Once you've done it, however, dab it on some kitchen towel, and then... Using a paintbrush, just gently manipulate it onto the surface that you want to put it on and then just use a paintbrush to manoeuvre it around until you're happy with its placement. Now, loads and loads of people hate transfers, mainly for the reason that when you put them on a curved surface like Space Marine shoulder pads, which is the normal place that people first encounter transfers, is trying to put your Ultramarines chapter symbol on your model, you'll find that when it dries, it all folds up or it doesn't stick flat to the surface that you're putting it on. And then when you go and Google how to put a transfer on properly, you see people naming chemicals and other special stuff you need like Microset, Microsol, Storm Shield, Hard Coat, whatever else. You don't need any of that. All you need is your model, the transfer, 
and Munitorum varnish or any other spray varnish will work just as well. As soon as you spray it onto your model when it's all dry, whatever transfer you've used will stick flat against that surface and will blend in with all the other texture of the model. It is fantastic. As soon as I discovered this worked, my life was changed and I put transfers on everything. I put transfers on all of my ultramarines, all of my blood angels, put transfer on my dog, transfers on my kids. It's the best thing ever. Do it. And so here it is, as requested by our scene, the finished Night Lord. It takes about 45 minutes, but as we said at the beginning, that's because you've got to paint all that gold trim, you've got to paint the little lightning bolts, you've got to, there's loads to do on this model, so there's no real quick way to do it, there's no true speed painting method, but 45 minutes per model isn't too bad at all. To base it, I've used Astra Granite. Let that dry, covered it in null oil to bring it right down and then dry brushed it, administratum grey. I wanted to keep it subtle and make it look like they're charging through the streets of some unfortunate imperial city that the Night Lords have decided to terrorise. If this has helped, like, subscribe, leave a comment below with a tutorial you'd like to see to get your models painted up quickly. Uh, and I will do my best to do it if it's within my power to do so. Thanks very much.